So yes, this can be fun. I promise. But there are around 600 plus properties that make everyone feel frustrated. CSS is actually easy to learn but hard to master. In order to master CSS, you have to know when to use what. So let's learn CSS. No crappy things, just what you need to get started. Before that, keep this in mind. Nobody is born with the CSS skill. It's just practice and having some fun while learning. Step 1. Understanding the basics. CSS is all about styling HTML elements. To start, you need to know the basics. How to write CSS rules, how to select HTML elements, and how to apply styles to them. A CSS rule consists of a selector and a declaration block. The selector targets the HTML element and the declaration block contains one or more declarations separated by semicolons. Each declaration includes a property and a value like this. A simple line of code like this changes the color of all the paragraphs to blue and sets the font size to 16 pixels. It's really simple but it is the foundation of everything that you will do in CSS. Step 2. CSS Selectors and Properties Selectors are the backbone of CSS. They allow you to target specific elements on your web page. There are various selectors including Element Selector which targets all the elements directly. Class selector which targets elements with a specific class name. ID selector which targets an element with a specific ID. Attribute selector which targets element with a specific attribute. Pseudo classes which targets the elements in a specific state. There are many pseudo classes but you should only focus mainly on three pseudo classes. Hover which lets you style something when you hover. After and before selector which lets you insert something after and before of each content of the selected element. These two selectors can be really useful to make some creative animations. You can also combine selectors to target exactly the element you need and apply styles precisely. Step 3. The Box Model The CSS box model is the fundamental concept of layout design. It consists of four main things. Content. The actual content that is the image or the text. Padding. It is actually the space between the content and the border. Border is the boundary that surrounds the padding and the content. Margin. Margin is the space around the border separating the element from other elements. In CSS, you have to think everything as a box. Step 4. Learn Flexbox. Flexbox is ideal for one-dimensional layouts, arranging items in a row or column. It is perfect for creating responsive designs and adapt to different screen sizes. There are mainly two types of Flexbox properties. Properties on the Flex container, which are Flex Direction, which allows you to set the direction of Flex container. Flex Wrap, which allows you to wrap the Flexbox depending on the width, whether the Flex items are forced onto one line or multiple lines. Align Items, it specifies the default alignment of the items inside the Flexbox. It is the vertical distribution of the elements. Justify Content, Justify Content defines how the browser distributes the space between and around items in the horizontal direction. Align content. Align content can be used for multi-line flex boxes. It has no effect when items are in a single line. It aligns the whole structure according to its value. Another one is the properties on the flex items. Align self. It can be used for alignment of one of the items inside a flexible element. Flex grow. Flex grow specifies how much the item will grow relative to the rest of the flexible items. Flex shrink. It is similar to the flex grow but it specifies how the item will shrink relative to the rest of the items inside the same container. Step 5. Grid layouts. CSS grid is perfect for two dimensional layouts allowing you to create complex grid based designs. It offers precise control over rows and columns with properties like grid template column, grid template rows and grid gap. This creates a 3 column grid with equal width columns and a 10 pixel gap between them. CSS grid can handle both the simple and complex layouts. Since CSS grid is advanced, I will post an entire video on CSS grid on this channel. Tip 6. CSS animations. CSS animations are what that takes your website from 0 to 1. You can create keyframe animations like this. Give it a time and it will just work as you expected. There are various CSS animation properties. Animation name. It is used to indicate the specific animation to apply to an element. Animation duration defines duration of time required for an animation to execute a full cycle. Animation timing functions. It defines how an animation progresses through its keyframe over time. You can use timing functions like ease in, ease out or create your own timing function using the cubic baser property. Animation delay. It specifies the amount of time that an animation need to wait before starting. Animation direction. It determines how an animation should play. Animation iteration count. It sets the number of times an animation should play. Step 7. 
CSS transitions. CSS transitions enables you to define the timing and duration of property change rather than having them happen instantly. You might think animations and transitions are the same thing, but there is a small difference. The animation property allows you to change the properties of an element over a duration of time, while the transition defines how to change over a specific duration. Use the transition property to specify which property will change the duration of the transition and optionally the timing function and delay. The various transition properties are transition duration. It specifies the duration of the transition. Transition timing function. It specifies the speed curve of the transition. Transition delay. It specifies the delay before the transition starts. Step 8. Responsive design. Creating websites is okay, but making it accessible to a wide range of users requires providing a way for them to access the website on all possible devices. You can use media queries to create designs that adapt to different screen sizes. Media queries allows you to apply style based on the device characteristics like width. And here is a bonus tip for you. Understand one thing, not everything needs to be reinvented. You can use some of the component libraries to reduce your effort. Also, most developers are not designers. You can also take inspirations from CodePen and other sites to make your website clean, crisp and clear. And that's a wrap for the world's best CSS course. If you liked it, hit those buttons over there and I will see you in another video.